guys, Matt welcome back to the shop and today we're talking about uh, reverse hemis. Now you might go, what the fuck is a reverse hemi? So, um, a lot of people when I did the hemi video talking about hemispherical combustion chambers and pistons and what have you and valves, people said, well if that is the perfect combustion, a sphere, a sphere is um, what it would be the most stable perfect combustion if you could have a spark right in the middle of it and it just basically propagate out. I said the problem with that is we'd have a piston so we can't have um, a, a, a perfect sphere, we have to have a hemisphere instead. Half a sphere. That's the bad boy. So that's where hemis come from and all the rest of it. Now loads of people started going about newer engines, newer V8s and all the rest of it where it's not exactly a hemisphere, it's kind of like this. Uh, well that's close enough for me most of the time. Um, you know, it's an evolution and it's their thinking of doing this, this trying to stick with this hemisphere malarkey. The problem with the hemisphere is, is that it's surface area to volume and so on. You just can't get high enough compression ratios. What you can do instead is stick a piston in like this, but then you're kind of losing this whole idea of this perfect hemisphere jobby. The fact of the matter is it's all about geometry and geometry dictates that you can't really do it. And a lot of people ask, well, why can't you just have a flat head and then have the hemisphere in the piston? So to do that, and that's what this reverse hemi is about, to do that, we have to keep everything in exactly the same place in a sense. So we'll keep everything there like so, and this will make sense in a second. So what we want to do is we want to put this inside the piston, but we can't just do this and then have a flat head. We can't do that. That would be fucking mental because we've got a fucking small end that goes there like so. So what we're going to have to do, like idiots, is we're going to have to actually come into the head. That's what we would have to do. We'd have to make a piston that's like this and then we drop the whole thing down so now that we drop the whole thing down, what we end up with is we end up with a piston that is like this with our, what is it, there was our original line then we have to put a hemisphere in this piston which would be like this so then there is our piston here is our line we can now have our valves do whatever they want we can have ports like this like so, we could have straight runners if we wanted we could do all this kind of loveliness like so wonderful, now we've got our perfect hemisphere we could have our spark plug here which means that it'd all propagate outwards it'd all be lovely, it'd be brilliant however our fucking piston is now well heavy because we've basically just doubled the height of our piston because this crown here has to be a certain thickness to take all the pressure that is inside this cylinder. We've now got these well dodgy hangy outy bits and all the rest of it and then all of a sudden becomes your ceiling problem as well. Where do you put your rings? Do you put your rings up here or do you keep your rings where they were? Well you'd probably keep them towards the top um, so it could sneak round and seal but then that means that this little squish area is a bit weird and but you could do this, there is no problem why you couldn't do this. The reason why you don't do this is because of your piston weight. In a sense, what you have done, if I can find it... Oh, where's my other one? Who cares? So, <laughs> so in a sense what you've done is you've got a piston, so you've got your piston down here like this. So you've got your piston, and then I don't have another one exactly the same. So instead of confusing you using two different pistons, I'll just use the same one. So you've got your piston like that. Now imagine you do that and then put another piston on top of it. Because in a sense there's a, a recess. Obviously you won't have the bosses. But that's what you've done is you've just recreated. You've put a piston. You can see it there, look. you put a piston on top of a piston. Because inside here there'll be a recess like this for your boss. So in a sense you've just put two pistons on top of each other. And if you wanted to put your rings up at the top here, it's going to have to be quite substantially thick here to be able to take one of those pressures of it wanting to push out. You've got to remember, all the force, all of the force that pushes down against your piston to create your 600 horsepower beast that you've got is also pushing this way radially outwards 
against this piston. It's pushing outwards, and this piston has got to be able to take this. It's got to be able to take that and not break. If you did it to this, these would bow out, they'd scrape, they'd go out around, it'd snap, it'd break, it'd be a complete fucking mess. Not only that is, these are really, you know, they're thin, so they'll be getting hot spots and all the rest of it. It would just be a fucking mess. This is why your piston crown is so thick, because it's got to take the full brunt. This piston crown has got to take the full brunt. It's actually back to the second ring there. It's got to take the full brunt of all that force. So the reason why you don't do this is because you'd have a piston. There's basically a piston on top of a piston, so you're almost doubling your weight. You probably are because of the thickness that everything needs to be. You do all this just to get this hemispherical um, hemispherical head that basically doesn't have high enough compression ratios. Why bother? Why would you do it? You'd have an automatic squish band in the corners, which is pretty good. You didn't have that before. You could also... So then the next question is, why don't you just shallow this out? You know what I mean? Instead of going for a, whole, a, a full hemisphere, why don't you shallow this out? Why don't you make a piston that has a pent roof like this? Like that. Why don't you do that? And some engines do. Diesels do that. You know what I mean? Why don't you do that? Well, some engines do. Why don't we do it for petrol engines? Because if you actually look at the, your head, you actually, where's that head gone? Oh, it's over there. I can't show you that actually. Um, <laughs> not yet. Uh, you know, it's so small that why not do it into the head? That's the thing. Um, you are still, your crown would be there. Right? Your crown would be there, and this section here is still heavier. Why does that matter? Because this is a part of the reciprocating masses. Your piston's going up and down, up and down, up and down. We want that to be as light as possible. And adding more material when we could just chew it out of the head instead. The head is not moving. You know what I mean? The head is not moving. We can just... Well, it is. <laughs> Obviously, when you're zipping along 100 mile an hour. What I mean is, in, res in you know, as a reference around to everything else, it's pretty much staying still. It's your piston that wants to move, and that's the reciprocating masses. We want these to be as low as possible. That's why we try and make pistons as flat. Where's that piston fucking gone? As you can see, this piston, apart from the relief, so we can have um, overlap and all the rest of it, this is pretty much bang on flat. There is a little recess in there. You can see the recess in there. There is a slight recess, so you can actually, basically, it's probably so you can actually lighten the piston even more a bit and actually put a bit of your combustion chamber in here. But um, I think this is for a turbo which is about lowering your compression ratio, so that's why they do that. Hope that makes sense. Um, we'll do more on this if needs be, if people don't quite get it, but that's why you don't do it. I've already said it. I'll see you in a bit.